I've been working in Unreal for about a year now. Working on a number of Game Jam games, starting a 3D platformer, making a tower defense game, and just generally messing about. So far I've been working in blueprints, but having to mess around with all these nodes, manually connecting them, right click, place new node, all that stuff, just to, for instance, add two variables together, is just irritatingly slow. So there's two options, moving to C++ or moving to Unity and C Sharp. So anyway, I downloaded Unity and got to work right away on some simple practice projects that I could use to familiarize myself a little bit with the engine. The plan was to make four simple throwaway practice projects, the first one of which was a simple clicker game. I started with something every clicker game needs, a button. Doing something this simple proved to be a good idea, because altogether I spent about 8 to 10 hours wrapping my head around Unity and, more importantly, how C Sharp worked. I had very basic programming skills from about 10 years ago, so at least I didn't have to relearn what a variable was, but beyond that, nothing has really stuck with me. Of course, a lot of blueprint skills are also somewhat transferable, if you know what the right methods are called in C Sharp which I did not. So after a while I had a setup where if I clicked the button, the text next to it would update. Truly a milestone worth a Nobel Prize. Anyway, after figuring that out, making some buttons that would add idle DPS wasn't that hard. Figuring out how to use the same script on multiple objects threw me for a bit of a loop at first, but before too long everything just made sense. I moved all of the score related code to a score manager objects that all the game objects could easily reference instead of having them all directly talk to each other. This is everything I needed to do for this part of the project. I learned about writing and reading variables and how to reference game objects to each other. Still, before moving on to my true practice projects, I wanted to make a simple player controller. Just to spice up the gameplay and get my feet a little wet. So I added a bit of movement. The character can move in any direction and has some pretty bad gravity and he also gets clamped to the borders of the screen. Now it's time to get into the real game. This one will have 3D graphics, ones that I've made by myself, not from the asset store, and needs to be at least somewhat playable by the end of this. Not a big game, but a playable one. The idea is to make a Harvest Moon-like farming simulator without all the complexity of maintaining relationships and the like, but just taking care of your plants. Since I'm working on my voxel art for another game that I'm working at at the moment, do get subscribed to keep up to date about that one by the way, I opened Blender and got to work. Just kind of freestyling the character. It didn't turn out too great, so I went looking for other software and I found Voxel Magica. And let me tell you, magic it is. The model I made didn't animate very well though, so after doing a little bit of research, which is a whole separate video, I got to redoing a model in a more animation friendly way. Now, back in Unity, I imported my player model, messed around with animations a little, but decided that I'll just have a walk animation looping for now. We can make a whole state machine later, but for now I just want to get to the character movement. Now, before we can move on, we need to make an actual world, so I made myself a quick sand tile, a hoe and a tilt sand tile. With these models I got to work on the main mechanic of the game, the actual farming. So of course I threw down a tile, added the following camera and then decided the actual farming was way too intimidating to get started on, so I went back to the animation. Making a quick idle animation and getting the state machine for the character ready. But when I try to re-import my character to update some of the animations, the engine just flat out refused to update the animations, making me delete and manually re-import the assets, having to go over all the animations to enable looping again. So after that it was time for some dinner, because such a basic function just straight up not working kind of pissed me off. A lot. Next up was the inventory. After spending a whole weekend trying to follow this tutorial series, I couldn't even understand half of it, I was about ready to give up. 
but instead of giving up on the project, I decided let's give up on the tutorial series first and see if I can't find anything better. I had learned a thing or two from following this series over the weekend, but surely starting a new tutorial series would now be easier. As it turned out, no. No, it was not. Creating an inventory system is just a very complicated thing and a horrible way to learn a new language. And here we are, having wasted just about a half a week of mashing my head into a brick wall. And while I did wonders for turning my brain into mush, I didn't really pick up too much information from it. So maybe this is about the time we just need to give up. While that game gets pushed to the side, probably never to be seen again, I needed a new project, something a little bit smaller in scale. Only one small step from a clicker game, so I would more or less know what I was doing, and only have to learn one or two new things at a time. But what could I possibly make like that? Taking a few steps back, I looked at another game genre I absolutely love, platformers. Now, I was not going to make a full 3D platformer, that wouldn't be a good idea, but making a simple 2D platformer with one or two levels, that might do the trick. A coin system would be closer to the clicker game I had just made than the inventory system that I've been wasting so much of my time on. And aside from that, it's mostly just physics, which isn't overly complicated to do. I hope. So, I made another character movement script. It was kind of nice having to redo something simple like that, honestly. Moving left and right, I added jumping and... what? Wait, did, did I just make Flappy Bird? I'm gonna be rich! Okay, no. Focus. Platformer. Let's try to fix that problem. Add a level to play, make some coins... Okay, this is all going fairly well so far. But to make this platform a little bit more interesting, let's add a moving platform. Okay, that took a little while longer, but still, it wasn't too complicated. The great thing is, with the movement script I made for this platform, I can also make a simple Goomba-like anime. And that's one of the things that I'm really enjoying about Unity. The way it incentivizes you to work so modularly. Not to say that you can't do something like that in Unreal, but an event graph really feels like one big thing you're making inside of your actor. Having a breakdown of what scripts are on what object invites you to think about how you can make a script useful in more than one instance at a time. In a case like this, enemies and floating platforms. They are very different things, but they're both having to move between two or more points, and that's something they have in common. So they can run the same script while being totally different in every other way. After messing around with the collision, creating knockback and general headaches surrounding the creation of this enemy, I figured I was about done learning what I could from this game. This one in the entire project by far was the one that was the most valuable in teaching me and showing me a lot of Unity's upsides. Now it was time to put my knowledge to the test. I had made two games and a failed one. Let's try to make two more simple games, but this time I'm gonna limit myself in allowing to use Google. It doesn't get much more basic than Pong. Starting off with a simple rectangle that moves up and down with your key inputs, adding another rectangle that serves as your opponent, a ball, an upper wall, a lower wall, and fields behind either player to count score. From here, it was really easy. I messed around with the 2D physics materials, something I already started to do due to the friction I needed to influence in my 2D platformer, to make the ball bouncy. I actually set the bounce value for the ball to 1.01, so that every time it bounces, it'll gain 1% speed, making the game just that little bit more exciting. Now, at the start of the game, it needs to shoot in a random direction. I messed about a little with it on my own until I decided, okay, for this, I'll actually go to Google. More for inspiration than instruction, though, which honestly is a good sign of me starting to pick up this new engine. Then the real test was making the enemy AI. Well, I hesitate to even call it an AI, really. The first idea was of course just have it match the ball's height, but that would make an unbeatable enemy. And also, it created some 
of weird and messy situations. So instead I took a step back and decided to look at it as a player that's just being given instructions. So when the ball is higher than the enemy on the screen, it moved up. And then when it was lower, it moved down. Using the exact same set velocity code as I've used for the player. So it would always be fair. Of course the AI controlled player will react instantly, but to my surprise, since it can't anticipate the ball's movement, it would actually end up being a pretty fair match. I just suck at Pong is the issue. This left me with just one more game to make. Since I got inspired by my 2D platforming game playing so much like Flappy Bird until I took out the infinite jumps, I figured why not just make Flappy Bird? It seems pretty easy, but it would require me to make some things that are infinitely loopable. So for this, I'd need to learn how to spawn in objects like that instead of just placing them by hand. Altogether, this wasn't as much of an issue as even Pong was, honestly. This game might be what I recommend going forward to people who are trying to get into game development, now that I've made it myself as well. Unfortunately, that also means there isn't really much to talk about here. I downloaded a tileset of the internet, added a bird and the floor, gave them both colliders, made a quick script for the flapping inputs when you press space, then came the pipes. This actually went a lot smoother than I had expected. I added a top and bottom pipe to a prefab, then I made an empty object with a script that would spawn these prefabs every two or so seconds with a random offset in height. I did mess up the timer code though, which led to... interesting results. The pipes have a script that automatically makes them move from right to left and destroy themselves after 15 seconds, when they are well outside of the view. And well, that's kind of it. Of course, I needed to add a death mechanic and score, and while both of those are pretty primitive, I think it's time we call this experiment for now. I've made four practice games, and at this point, I think I've explored this engine enough. At this point, with a few more projects worth of practice, I think it won't be too long before I am at the same technical level in C Sharp and Unity as I am in Blueprint and Unreal. On the one hand, we have Unreal with a nice interface and a bunch of tools to help you improve the visuals of your games. On the other side we have Unity, which looks a lot more simplistic and in a lot of ways certainly as an engine is a lot more bare bones. But the way it encourages the modularity of working with scripts compared to Unreal's blueprint system is something I personally really, really like. The main reason I got interested in Unity is the fact that more and more often I found myself running into a speed limit while programming in Blueprint's visual scripting, by having to drag around and connect all the nodes with lines. And in order to keep a Blueprint readable, you also need to do a little bit of visual cleanup, making sure that the lines are easy to follow, they don't overlap too much, and so on. Altogether, when starting a slightly bigger project, which I'll talk about more soon in a different video, so do get subscribed for that, I really ran into a speed related issue and iterating also is a lot more painful having to disconnect and reconnect a bunch of nodes rather than just commenting out some code and trying something new. All of these things are small complaints and in no means a way to signal that blueprints are bad. I love them in fact, but every upside has its downside. So wanting to move to a more traditional way of programming, I didn't fancy diving headfirst into C++. And that's why I went into Unity. How will I move forward? Sticking with Unreal? Moving to Unity? Well, for the time being, I'm not gonna lean one way or the other. I'm working on a large project in Unreal, one that I've made a solid foundation for that I will not be remaking in Unity. So while I don't want to declare a winner in this video, for the games I want to make and the projects I will be working on, I think Unity is the much more sensible option for moving forward with.